All right, bull runners, welcome back to the channel. So we have some big news happening in the crypto space today. We're talking about XLM, we're talking about XRP, you know, the partnerships that have been taking place behind the scenes, what's happening on the price chart, and also what Rao Paul has to think about Bitcoin being created by the governments along with some other macro market data that shows where we are in this market cycle and where we plan to go in the short term, the medium term, and the long term. So comment 777. If you're feeling blessed, comment 777. If you're feeling bullish and Elon Musk is doing something very powerful right now behind the scenes and could it be tied to XLM and XRP? We're unveiling some documents with you guys and connecting the dots on how, you know, X payments could be tied to Stellar's XLM. So if you're feeling bullish, take your putter, grab the like button, give it a timidity taparoo. You know who we're doing this for, guys. We're doing it for grandma. We're going to beat the SEC and we're buying our house back. and We're buying the whole block back with XRP. Let's run it. Welcome back. So let's start with Bitcoin's liquidation heat map. As you guys can see, the leverage has been stacking up. There's about $248 million worth of leverage on the on the weekly here. The majority of this is upwards of $42,000. You can see, you know, kind of trickles off at about 43,800. So the majority of these shorts would be liquidated around 44K if Bitcoin were to rally to that. And now on the month, if we zoom out for Bitcoin. This is crazy, guys, because you can see the vast majority of the upside. So Bitcoin's actually looking bullish for the month of February, you know, if we were to liquidate these shorts. And then um, I'll talk about where my medium term price target would be for Bitcoin um, leading into Bitcoin's halving. If we zoom out on the six month chart going into April, as you guys know, Bitcoin halves every four years. It cuts the rewards in half for the miners and leading into Bitcoin's halving every single time we see a sell off. So to think that this time is different, you just have to look at history and it rhymes. It doesn't, you know, repeat with 100% accuracy, but it rhymes. And $34,000 looks like there's $8.2 billion worth of leverage down here. So I would expect leading into April, Bitcoin to see a sell off. Now I want to talk about why that's not necessarily a bad thing because this is healthy for the markets, but you guys know what happened with uh, Jamie Dimon talking about Bitcoin being a pet rock. I, I thought this was pretty interesting. Listen to what uh, what this guy has to say. What do I think about Jeffrey Epstein's banker being concerned that a distributed, decentralized, open public money could potentially be used for bad things sitting on a ski resort in Davos? I don't really care. I don't know why anyone cares, right? I mean, that guy knows uh, when money's used for bad things. So I, it's a weird opinion of his. And my pet rock was up, as you said, 160% last year. Uh, it performed well against uh, the dollar. So I don't know. I don't really care what that guy has to say about Bitcoin. I don't know why anybody does. When you think about Bitcoin and transactions that we're, we're seeing. And, and a lot of the focus, at least coming into last year too, was not just what the ETF approvals would look like, but what also the utilization from here would look like moving out of the, the crypto winter. What type of utilization are you seeing? Uh, I mean, first of all, Bitcoin's is open public digital infrastructure for the world. So you see utilization all over planet Earth for all sorts of different things, right? Anyone can do whatever they want with it, which is part of the beauty and part of the attraction. I personally think that the killer use case we'll see over the next few years is the fact that all 8 billion human beings on the planet face fiat debasement. That means that their government's local currency loses value persistently. And debt, global debt to GDP is what, 360% right, right now? So... I mean, everyone has to own something else. And I think the killer use case over the next few years is going to be owning something that they can't make any more of. And so that's why I think Wall Street's attracted to it. That's why I think you've seen a price run up is because, I mean, even gold being bullish in the face of a hawkish Fed, the world is concerned with the treasury and the bond market. The world is concerned with the debt that governments have accrued without any growth. And they found this thing that's free to hold, that's scarce, that you can put in your brain and it's just the killer app. It's the best expression of fiat debasement that literally everyone on the planet has to face. So that to me is the killer app. And then, if, you know, people make payments with it. People do all sorts of stuff with it because uh, there's no central governing party to tell them not to, which is beautiful. It's pure humanity. 
Well, Jack, it's Johnny here. It's good to see you. I'm curious to get your perspective then on regulations. There's been lots of talk about what exactly that is going to look like, whether or not that would be a bullish thing for the industry, whether or not it's going to hold the industry back. Where do you stand on regulation? And I guess, what are you expecting to hear from lawmakers, to hear from regulators here in the U.S. this year in terms of the movement that we could potentially see? Yeah, so to be clear, me personally and my company, we are Bitcoin company. I'm yeah. a Bitcoiner. I think crypto is a load of garbage. I think it's generally a distraction to what this technology and this movement represents and is here to change. And so how the world is going to sort out the fact that some kid named Vitalik Buterin printed a lot of coins in his basement and then pre-sold them to people and has been promising all sorts of crazy things that have never happened. I don't know. Is that a security? But I, I guess the point is, I don't care. Everyone knows that Bitcoin has regulatory clarity, that Bitcoin is now officially on Wall Street, that Bitcoin is distributed. It works. Its monetary policy has never changed. And that's why I'm here. I'm here to change the world through Bitcoin and push Bitcoin as far as we can as humanity and society. So the regulation on, I think, altcoins are arbitrages on this trend. I don't think they'll be around, you know, by the time I die. I imagine, you know, what what is Dogecoin going to do for society over the next 20 years? Come on, what are we talking about? So I, I guess I don't really care. Bitcoin uh, has the clarity it needs, and uh, I think it's going to be a $5, $10, 20000000000000 trillion asset over the next 18 months. Jack, you mentioned Vitalik, of course, the Ethereum co-founder. When you think about what we've already seen with the spot Bitcoin ETF and a lot of attention now pointing towards whether we will see an Ethereum or an Ether uh, ETF come forward, do you believe that that's like the next kind of dam breaking type of moment to really thrust even more institutional um, knowledge and even more institutional investment and inflows into crypto as a whole, even even though I know you just said that uh, crypto is a load of garbage. Yeah, crypto is a load of garbage. Uh, Jamie Dimon was Jeffrey Epstein's banker. Like a lot of this stuff is just noise, pure, unethical, malicious noise. I hear my, my opinion, guys, again, is that global debt to GDP is 360%. What does that mean? The governments have piled up so much debt with no way to pay it back. So who's fronting that bill? I mean, someone's run up a $36 trillion bill at the bar. Who's paying for that? And the answer is whoever's holding the currencies that they can debase, that they can print more of. They have to issue more debt and print more currency to pay that bill. And so everyone has to find something else to hold. Do I want to hold Ethereum? Ethereum's a tech play. Ethereum's a gamble that Jamie Dimon's going to use it. What do you say in his ski resort Davos interview that he's going to use it to flip real estate? What does that even mean? That doesn't mean anything. I was around, I mean, people don't know history. I was around when Ethereum got hacked and that the Ethereum Foundation cherry picked transactions. They were like, oh, we broke something. So that that transaction doesn't exist. We're going to change the monetary policy here. That's what I'm going to do to hedge the Federal Reserve and the fact that they got a front a $37 trillion bill. Yeah, no thanks. And no one on Wall Street thinks that either. Right. Bitcoin is the actually only innovation that is attractive to solve what is the biggest financial problem ever, which is central banking. So Ethereum is a tech play. And if Ethereum turns into the new Tesla, like a stock, like an equity. Great. Sure. People are going to get stimulus checks and they're going to go punt Ethereum and, you know, bet that Vitalik is the new Elon Musk. But it's not a new world reserve currency that everyone can use to escape the fact that we're all going to get debased because over the last 100 years, governments accrued so much debt that we're in serious trouble. I mean, the last thing yeah. I'll say, guys, the bond market has never been this bad. The 60-40 portfolio that's so safe, bond holders are doing way worse than this guy who just casually owns Bitcoin, right? So this is a massive problem. And no, I don't think Solana, Ethereum, Dogecoin, no, I don't think that that matters. So do you guys agree with him or do you disagree? One thing they spot on about is Jamie Dimon with JP Morgan Chase. You know, I talked about this in a previous video. JP Morgan was hit with a $200 million fine for letting employees use WhatsApp to evade regulators reach. And then they also agreed to pay $920 million in connection with schemes to defraud precious metals in U.S. Treasuries market. And then France fined uh, JP Morgan $29 million in tax fraud settlement. And then Jamie, JP Morgan paid $75 million in role in Epstein sex trafficking operations. So anyone that listens to what Jamie Dimon has to say, 
is is an idiot and can't be taken seriously just like him. So all of his comments is really just to protect his uh, his capital with all these investors in Chase and in JP Morgan so they don't just sell out and buy into Bitcoin. So they they have to slow it down. That's what they're doing. All these big bankers, all these big institutions, all these big big companies, they know that the dollar is being debased and the dollar is going to go down over time and the global reserve currency is going to shift. You know, it happens every, what, like 80 to 100 years. And so the dollar is on year, what, 79 or 80? So we're pretty much there. We have less than 20 years before it shifts to something else. And what it's shifting to is CBDC, central banking digital currencies. So I do agree with him that Bitcoin's use case is a store of value as a commodity in the collapse of the dollar. But in terms of solving the central bank issue of, you know, global transfer and international payments, XRP and Ripple is solving that problem. And so when we look at Bitcoin's chart, we need to talk about Bitcoin first when, in order to talk about XRP, XLM in the global plan that's being ushered in behind the scenes by 2025. And so Bitcoin right now moves the market and history is repeating once again. Bitcoin tends to retrace approximately 100 days before the halving and this time is no different. Now, the real question is not will Bitcoin retrace before the halving because it's happening right now as we called on this channel with the 618 retracement. Sure enough, Bitcoin ran up to $49,000, $500 above our price target of $48,500 and crashed down below 40 k Now, what's going to happen in the, in the short term? And then in the medium term and the long term. So the short term, we could see, you know, Bitcoin come all the way down, you know, <laughs> to, to levels that would shock a lot of people. Or it could just have a minor correction because this correction, guys, is not that big. You know, people aren't that scared. You know, if we open up uh, coinmarketcap.com, the real key here is to look at the fear and greed index and see where people's emotions are at right now. And they're neutral. So with Bitcoin crashing to 39K, People aren't in fear yet. And so this crash it hasn't really even happened yet. This correction, it's just halfway there because arguably until everyone's saying, you know, Bitcoin's going to 12K, then the correction would most likely be over. When people start screaming blood in the streets, then but right now people are thinking that the markets are going to go up. People are thinking that the correction's done because they're neither greedy nor they are they fearful right now. And so there still needs to be more liquidation uh, liquidation events taking place for these leverage traders that are going to be longing the market at like 35K. You know, so Bitcoin could come anywhere down between 30K, 32, 33K. You can see right here in this blue box. If we compare back to March, uh, a black swan event could happen. And I'm going to be talking about the Federal Reserve as well, too, and what they're doing with their effective federal funds, right? So the, the most important thing to understand here to grasp out of this video is not a single human being on planet Earth knows what's going to happen for Bitcoin next. They don't know. But what you can do is you can emotionally prepare for the most likely case scenario. And the most likely case scenario we're going to be talking about in this video. And I'll show you guys, you know, my game plan for this, because I do think there's going to be, you know, short term temporary rallies while we're correcting down closer to 30 to 33K. And so Bitcoin 80 days before the halving 2016, Bitcoin was 62% below the all-time high. In 2020, Bitcoin was 52% below the all-time high. In 2024, Bitcoin is currently 42%. It, it was 42% below the all-time high. So everything is going according to plan. Now, in the long term, you guys know how I'm feeling. I'm bullish. Look at this chart. The bears will tell you that this time it's different. And if we look right here at what happened in 2016, you know, we saw a breakout from this range that it consolidated in for 200 days. And then it back tested the range with this quick wick, consolidated sideways, and then broke out six to 12 months after Bitcoin's having. And so as you guys can see, you know, we're just starting this sell off and we still have further down to go, potentially down to 30K. Some people are calling for 28K for Bitcoin, but after this six to 12 months later, you know, if you're just holding through this, this situation right here, you're gonna have to be patient, right? As you've had to been patient during the entire bear market, if you bought the top, but, Six to 12 months after the halving, end of 2024, if the Fed hasn't broken something, if we're not in World War III and they continue to print money, which they're most likely going to do, then the long term is looking bullish. Now, a quick reminder from the Wolf of All Streets, uh, Scott Melker on Twitter, he's saying Grayscale is not dumping on you. People saying Grayscale keeps sending Bitcoin to Coinbase and dumping. People are selling GBTC and Grayscale is being forced to sell Bitcoin to match. It's nothing nefarious. It's just mechanics. 
So there's still more Bitcoin to offload, but that's being gobbled up by the other institutions as well, too. There just is more outflows than inflows right now. And Raul Paul, as you guys know, has been a macro Bitcoin bull along with Michael Saylor. And looks like he's turning into a conspiracy theorist. Listen to this. I said, and I think the U.S. government and the U.K. government invented it, which is the NSA and the GCHQ in the U.K., who are the two world centers of cryptography because even how the, the white paper's written it's you think there's trans a yes i always have and i asked the department of defense they said yeah we've considered that too that they see it was official or it was just people from that that went rogue i don't think it's a necessarily a rogueness i think like google have like google x where they do tons of experiments right they know that one of the esoteric risks for the entire Western system is the issue of money. So there's probably groups of people who are given things to try. And if you can see the new system, maybe they tried a hundred of these and just one succeeded. We don't know. But it would make sense because that's what they do, this kind of stuff. So one of these took off. And so... I think it's always been. I don't think it's a coincidence it came out of the financial crisis. I don't think it's a coincidence that, that the halving cycle and all of this is all related. It is the solution. It always, always has been the solution. You just can't go there tomorrow. Mm. So all you need to do is let it happen slowly and manage that transition. You'll be okay. There'll be times where it speeds up because we've got something bad going on. And there's times when it slows down. But if you, and that's what I think the US government regulation is trying to do. They don't want to ban crypto. Just slow this down. Because if all the deposits leave the banking system, it's game over. Mm. If they don't set up a way of collecting taxes because everybody's living in crypto land and they have to ask your honesty and what trades you've done, that's not going to work for them because they can't pay the bills. So, I think it's, they're trying to catch up. Um, I think that the UK will have a CBDC. I think the Europeans will. It's all coming relatively soon, relatively soon, the next five years, three years, four years. And they'll feel more in control of the system that they've got because they need to pay the interest payments. So I do agree with them that they're trying to slow it down. And also, there's a reason why I don't hold any Bitcoin is because you don't know who the founder is. Satoshi Nakamoto, so all the Bitcoin bulls using arguments that Bitcoin's the original has regulatory clarity. You know, yes, that's true. So I do think Bitcoin will do well, but it's not going to create life-changing wealth. Anyone with a brain can understand that. That's common sense. You know, Bitcoin might pull a two, three, four, maybe a five X this bull run cycle, but altcoins are going to do better. And specifically XRP is the only other altcoin that I believe uh, has that regulatory clarity because I base my beliefs off facts and they won the lawsuit. So every other altcoins in question, XRP and Bitcoin, XRP is the safest play and also will be the one that uh, could outperform Bitcoin drastically because it's massively undervalued in terms of market cap. And so when we look at you know Bitcoin's market cap on coinmarketcap.com, it holds 50.3% of the dominance. Bitcoin's dominance is gonna roll around and that's when we're gonna see the biggest alt season. Now, a lot of these altcoins in the top 10 aren't gonna be here 10 years from right now. But as you guys know, XRP, stayed in the top 10 during the entire lawsuit. So XRP is for sure gonna be here when I show you this information and these partnerships that we've been sharing with you over the past few years. Just for it being down 9% at 51 cents right now, is it a $27 billion market cap? Look at Bitcoin, $779 billion market cap. So for XRP to catch up to Ethereum, Ethereum has a $265 billion market cap. So XRP will be one of the best performers this bull run. Now, what could slow it down? Well, it's what's happening right now on the macro market sentiment, you know, the institutions having to sell off, Grayscale having to sell off, you know, Bitcoin to match people that are selling GBTC. It's also the Federal Reserve, a potential pivot taking place. A lot of people aren't talking about this right now. They're just telling you that altcoins are going to explode, altcoins are going to go crazy. And yes, I do think that'll happen at the end of 2024. But leading into April, guys, it's going to be a sticky situation because the Fed has been paused on their effective federal funds rate, which determine how expensive it is for banks to borrow money from each other for overnight loans. But it's at 5.33 and it's been there since, you know, July of 2023. So the Fed's been paused for a while. And as you guys know, it's not when the Fed raises the effective federal funds rate that the markets crash. It's not even when they pause the effective federal funds rate. It's when they drop 
and they start lowering rates so that, that, that we crash. And to bring this up to show you the truth, when we look at the S&P 500 index, I put up the effective federal funds rate in purple that you can see right here. You know, during the past few times, back from 2015 until 2019, when they were raising the effective federal funds rate, you guys saw the markets rallying. And even when they paused the rates, the markets rallied even further to the upside. But when they started dropping the rates right here, that's when we saw the crash of 2020 happen because of the effective federal funds rate dropping in response to that. Then they printed a massive amounts of money to bail their way out of the problem. And so most likely be the same situation. So back in 2007 to 2008, that's when QE really started ramping up. I believe it was with George Bush. You know, he started saying, oh, okay, well, let's print a bunch of money and let's bail our way out of this problem. And so the market crash of the subprime mortgage crash from 2007 to 2009, people call it the 2008 crash. But what really happened is in 2007, they started crashing the effective federal funds rate down. And when they started dropping it, the market shortly after that started to crash. And so this is the most important thing that we need to look at. People are looking at this chart, that chart, the other chart, this fundamental thing. But when we look at the effective federal funds rate and see what the Fed is gonna do next, this will give us a gauge on what's gonna happen in the stock market. So they paused the rates and just like the last few times when they paused the rates, we see a crash to the upside and we see a, a final rally. And so what I'm expecting to happen now, again, I hope I'm wrong here, but I'm just looking at history. What I'm expecting to happen is when they start cutting the rates, the markets are going to rally into into the uh, the end of the pausing. But when they start cutting the rates, then we're going to see a massive crash in the stock market. Now, the real question is, how is that going to affect crypto and when will they start cutting rates? Great question. I'm glad you asked. So looking at the CME Fed watch tool, there's six days, 22 hours until the next FOMC meeting. They're going to decide what they're going to do with the rates. 97.4% are expecting them to keep them at the current levels. Pause, flat line, holding the line. And so that's going to be January 31st, the end of the month. Then the next meeting is March 20th. Well, 60% are expecting them to keep them current. 38% are expecting them to drop them by, you know, 25, roughly 25 basis points and 1% is expecting an even deeper rate cut. Now let's go into May. So arguably by March, there's a potential that they could start cutting, but by May, 53.8% are expecting a slight rate cut of like 25 basis points. 18% are expecting to keep it steady. 27% are expecting like a 50 point uh, basis, 50 basis point rate cut by June of 2024. You know, 53% are expecting a, a much larger rate cut by July, 50% are expecting an even bigger rate cut. And by September of 2024, you know, that's when they're expecting to cut. So what even bigger? So most likely by March is when it would start, but it doesn't just fall off of a shelf right away. You know, it takes time. And as you guys can see, it took during the 2007 high right here. They had already started cutting in July of 2007, but the markets didn't start crashing until October. So it took few, a few months. And even when the market started crashing, it took 518 days to reach a bottom. So it took almost two years to go to the bottom. So the stock market isn't just going to roll around and go straight down to, to Chinatown, go straight down, you know, back to the low of 2020 or even the high of 2007. It's not just going to do that right away. It'll take time and there's going to be uh, recoveries like relief rallies over the period of a week to a month to three months during the crash. But nonetheless, the stock market is due for a correction. Now, we're out here in uh, Florida. We just visited a place called Solomon's Castle and Howard Solomon, the owner of it, he died back in 2016. You know, he sold the, the top of the stock market back over here in 2007 saying that we're due for a correction and he started putting money into some old vintage Ford automobile. So this, and then he built a castle and he built a, a boat on a moat and his family's doing tours there till this day. So that guy's a real legend. So what are you guys going to be putting uh, your your profits into from this crypto market? Because when we look at the US dollar now compared to the effective federal funds rate, you don't want to just keep it in cash because when the effective federal funds rate turned around and they started lowering rates, we saw the value of the dollar drop drastically in comparison to other countries' currencies. And so the first potential um, rate lowering is coming in like March, March, April, May of 2024, you know, somewhere around here. And so what could happen for the dollar is the dollar could see a sell-off 
over the next few months leading towards the end of 2024 going back down to you know 88 or 92 on the dxy and i would also expect the rsi to come down closer to 30 within this range right here with crypto breaking out but eventually you know the dollar takes time to fall apart completely so we would see like relief rallies on the way down for the dxy we've been bullish for you know months so right here, we could be forming a potential gravestone doji or a shooting star candle on the monthly that I talked about in previous videos. And as you guys can see back here, if I were to point back in 2019, this is what happened. So when this candle closed right here, you see this long upper wick in red and a little bit shorter of a wick to the downside. There's still some there, but then the next candle that formed, you know, didn't go as high on the wick as the previous one. Same thing as the month after that in September then in October, then in November, and then all the way down here in December. Then we rallied out of here, faked everyone out, thinking that we were gonna uh, perform a price reversal because we held this downward trending resistance as support, but this was a massive bull trap because the bull entered here with longs and there need to be one final liquidation event to just boom, short everyone out of the market for COVID and then Donald Trump signed the CARES Act into law, then they just start printing their way out of here. So even if we see a black swan event like that happen, disease X, you know, that must are in something for World War Three, and we see a shakeout event further to the downside, potentially 25, even if we come all the way back down to the low. I don't think that'll happen, but it's on the books, right? It's on the table. So we need to look at what's on the table in most likely case scenario. Then there's like extreme case scenario and uh, prepare for both of those. An extreme case scenario is disease X closing down the economy, something similar to this March of 2020 to fake everyone out to think that we're going up. And that's when everyone goes back into greed again. And so what I would expect to happen here is for us to close the monthly candle into uh, monthly for January and to form something like this, form a gravestone or a shooting star candle. And then in February for us to rally up in the short term and then for us to close February lower than the high of the beginning of January. And then for March, for us to do something like this. Then for April, for us to do something like this. And then in May, for us to find a bottom somewhere around 28 to 33K. And then for us to work our way out of here going towards the end of 2024 as the dollar you know, starts to see a massive, massive sell-off. And then if there's a bigger shakeout event than this, okay, well, we'll be ready for it. We'll have dry powder on the sidelines because as you guys can see what happened back in July of 2019, August of 2019, it wasn't just a massive liquidation event to the downside and for us to just go down instantly and back test, you know, back test $6,500 right away. It took a period of time for us to sell off you know as you guys can see 180 days even into march that was 274 days and so we have some time until bitcoin's having that's the key is patience here it takes time right so next month there might be a rally back up to you know 42 43 44k and then for us to continue the downtrend so don't get caught here's what's going to happen okay a lot of people are going to get caught right up here and they're going to think that the markets are done done dropping and bitcoin's correction is over they're thinking that it was just a, oh it's just a 20 percent correction while that could be true that could be true i mean sure we could shoot higher i do think we're going to see a much deeper correction going into bitcoin's having and a lot of people are going to get faked out over the next um, 7 to 14 days now in the long term though if you're just holding and you don't care what happens all through 2024 because you know the narrative leading into 2025 is we're going into phase three and phase four of the bull well then you can hold and you can be fine knowing that you didn't invest more than you can afford to lose with these massive partnerships taking place like for example vast partnered with spacex for the launch of the first commercial space station and as you guys know elon musk he recently launched uh twitter x payments or just x payments that account so he's planning something big and so obviously that would lead to a boost in you know dogecoin uh, even though jack Mahler said that like what's the use case that dogecoin has well elon musk drives that community so i do expect dogecoin to see some rally into this news but also could there be some potential partnership happening with xlm stellar as you guys know ripple you know he was part of the founding team back in 2011 2013 and he and he founded uh stellar xlm and he also founded vast now vast 
partnered with SpaceX. And very interesting, if you look right here on the screen, when you look at the logo for X, and then you look at Stellar XLM's logo, then you look at XRP's logo, there's just too big of a coincidence to just ignore it, that they, that they aren't planning something behind the scenes because half of the global financial system, you know, will run on X payments is what Elon Musk is planning to do. He's creating a, a uh, competitor to China's WeChat. So what blockchain could be used for this? If we look at the Vast team founded and funded by board chair and tech, uh, tech fellow Jed McCaleb, Vast has uh, assembled a unique team of experienced and talented human uh, spaceflight advisors and engineers. We have the talent, financial resources, and sense of urgency needed to achieve our mission. So one thing that I find very interesting is, you know, Jed McCaleb and Ripple, they're in payments and now they're getting into space with Vast. Elon Musk was into space with SpaceX and now he's getting into payments with X.com. So they're just reversing roles. So they're probably meeting, you know, my assumption here, which I could be wrong about, but they're probably meeting behind the scenes and they're talking about implementing the blockchain tech for, you know, XLM, XRP, getting ready for this ushering in of this new, the new payment rails when CBDCs are ready. And they're really going to start pulling the trigger on all this stuff after the lawsuit is cleared away with the SEC post April towards the end of 2000. 2024. That's what I would expect. Now, risk to reward ratio. Let's look, is it a good time to be buying? Is it a good time to be selling? Is it a good time to be holding in the short term? As you guys can see on XLM to the US dollar price chart, XLM sitting 11 cents right now. It's 600% away from the all-time high of roughly 79.80 cents, whereas a correction to the downside that could come if Bitcoin sees a sell-off, right? Because if Bitcoin sees a sell-off to the downside and Bitcoin comes back down to 30K, well, what would happen here? I mean, how much further to the downside is that? That's another 23% correction. If we go all the way down to, that's like 24, 25% for Bitcoin to come down to 30K. So if that were to happen, I would expect XLM and the rest of the altcoin market to bleed out as well too, because it just follow, they follow Bitcoin. Very simple. Liquidity would flow out of the whole market and um, altcoins would bleed out more. So I would expect XLM to do a 35% correction to the downside and come potentially down to seven cents, which was the low, this would be the final shakeout event. It was the low of January of 2023 and also June of 2023 right here. And as you guys can see, this was support in September of 2020 that we saw a sell off into before we absolutely took off. So this would be the final, the final shakeout event that I would expect to happen um, leading into the halving. And then people to freak out with, you know, the dollar crashing, Crypto, yes, it does move inversely to the dollar, but sometimes they do move together at the same time and then they start to differentiate and go in opposite directions. Because in COVID, you guys saw the value of the dollar drop. Same thing for crypto, same thing for the stock market, same for the thing for the precious metal market. Everything dropped, everyone panicked, everyone froke, freaked out. Then people started to realize where the real store of value was. And so they moved all the money into crypto, they moved it out of the dollar. And so something like that could take place. So a 35% correction to the downside, this would be the last final stop before we absolutely explode all the way down to seven cents here and so i would expect XL, xlm xrp to do well gemini in my video yesterday i talked about you know them potentially doing something with xrp the riddle was answered xrp perpetual contracts coming soon to gemini so while they did a good job of marketing that to build anticipation it's a big nothing burger so i mean it's not the it's not the biggest news in the world you know what i mean so it's it, it's good for use case obviously but Ultimately, the main use case is coming through these massive, massive global banking partnerships. Listen to Brad and what he has to say here. The, the macro environment around custody digital assets uh, is expected to be close to $10 trillion by the year 2030. And it, inevitably, uh, people are going to need a place to store those assets and uh, safe, secure. And they're going to need to be able to transfer them as well, having good on and off ramps. Uh, even a tokenization engine, some of the work Ripple is doing around central bank digital currencies or CBDCs. So we think the, there's a lot of pieces that uh, come together. And we already had, and I remember when you and I first spoke, uh, you know, I remember being on a, a call with one of the largest top 10 banks in the world and a, a, com a bank Ripple was already working with, and they were asking us about, could we help them with their custody? This is prior to the medical acquisition. And we weren't in a position to do that. And so when we think about that synergy, the ability to say to that existing Ripple customer, hey, you know, here's a, a best in class, you know, going head to head time and time again and winning uh, on the custody uh, level, you know, to be able to bring that product to them, I think is a great opportunity for the, the two companies together.
So a lot of people are using the argument that, you know, these banks, these CBDCs won't need XRP. And while that may be true, you know, them using uh, Ripple, RippleNet and implementing, you know, on-demand liquidity, implementing Ripple's products, they will need XRP for liquidity over time. And do you think that Ripple would just abandon XRP? I don't think so, guys. Why would they spend over $200 million? Think about that. $200 million. Why would they spend that much money to fight the SEC if they didn't need XRP? They would just be like... Okay, whatever, you know, sure, they could have fought them for the whole industry, but the fact that they won and they just have to make a final payment leading into April for the settlement could be 20 million, 50 million, who knows how much that is. Once they get the final green light that the lawsuit is completely over, right? The most important part of the lawsuit is done. They won, but once the lawsuit is completely over, then look at all these partnerships, guys. All of these companies could start dumping hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars into XRP to buy it up towards the end of 2024. Look how many partnerships are on this spreadsheet right here. Some of the biggest banks and institutions, not some of them, majority of them, right? Majority of them. Look at the employees, revenue in the billions, you know, for some of these companies. Santander is over 200,000 employees, revenue in the billions, 48. You can see you know, American Express, Mitsubishi Australia. I mean, some of these don't have the images on here, but MoneyGram, SBI Holdings, um, the Asia MTM, Western Union, you know, Arrington XRP Capital. Why would these why would these companies partner with Ripple if it wasn't gonna do something big? Now, and why is why is XRP's price going down? Great question. Why is XRP's price going down if Ripple is making all these partnerships? Well, it's because XRP is still following Bitcoin. There could be a decoupling event happening between XRP and Bitcoin. And I think that's the big the big event that's going to take place um, either this bull run or next bull run by 2030. And so that's what I'm getting ready for. And I, I believe XRP will out drastically, drastically outperform Bitcoin because like Raul Paul said, which I do agree with, Bitcoin is the beta test coin created by the NSA. The fact that nobody can tell us who Satoshi Nakamoto is, is is concerning. People say that it's good because it's decentralized, but think about it. If you work for the NSA, if you work for the government and you're sitting behind a closed door meeting, you would probably say, well, let's make up a name and let's make people think it's decentralized and the creator just wanted to just disappear. Let's make people think that. Yeah, they'll buy that story 100%. Of course they would. And then let's create something else that's the final product because you know they've been testing different things for a long period of time. And when did Bitcoin come out? It came out around the collapse, guys, of the subprime mortgage crash. And then they started printing money. So maybe the government knew, maybe that they knew that the dollar was done for after that. And it was just going to take maybe a decade or two for it to finally fall apart. And so then they created XRP, they created XLM, they work on, you know, stuff like XDC, HBAR, Algorand, all these people start coming together in these closed door meetings and start figuring out how they can be able to completely change the financial system. They just realize it's going to take a few years, right? It's going to take maybe a decade or two. It's not going to happen tomorrow, right? And so the price action on the chart, that's why this is not that important. But what is important is looking at when we are oversold and overbought and knowing when to get the best entry positions. And as always, not financial advice. I'm not going to tell you to buy. I'm not going to tell you to sell. But I, what I am going to tell you is what's happening on the charts. And then you can make up your own mind from that. So looking at XRP, we see this upward trending support right here in yellow. And as I talked about here, I would expect a, a bounce. And that's exactly what happened. It bounced off of 49 cents. We're sitting at 51 cents right now. The resistance to the upside. If we see a relief rally at the beginning of February for Bitcoin, upwards of 40 to 44K, I would expect XRP to rally up to 55 cents right here, potentially, potentially upwards of 58 cents towards this downward trending resistance right here. And then for us to see a final shakeout event for Bitcoin and also for XRP to come down to this other upward trending support that it's held back since 2022. This is a very strong support line, guys, since June of 2022. And so when I show you this right here, what I would expect to take place is the RSI right now is sitting at 30 on the RSI. So sure, we could see, you know, a drop a little bit further to downside. Maybe we know, might not rally up this far. We might do something like this and then come back down to 46 to 47 cents, roughly around here. Then I would expect the RSI to bottom out somewhere down here below 30. And then for us to see, you know, a reversal at some point. So the fact that the RSI on the daily candles is sitting right now, right at 30 is actually a really good sign. So in terms of the macro, we're pretty we're we're pretty far into oversold territories. We could go further down to the downside and get even more oversold, and that would be around 48 cents. But 
What I would expect to happen if we go down here to this upward trending support for XRP, I would expect a bounce off of this and for us to come back up to retest 55 cents at some point. So anything for XRP below 55 cents is a steal in the long term. Now, it doesn't mean that it could go, uh, it can't go lower because when we zoom out and we look at the total two, the crypto total market cap, we just broke out from this neckline that uh, the market was struggling to break out from all the way since August of 2022, April of 2023. Uh, and so we're in the next phase of the bull. We're in the disbelief phase. And so how many days did we spend in the disbelief phase in the past? Well, if I were to zoom in for you guys and show you what this looked like when we finally broke out, well, let's just measure from when we formed this high right here in 17th of August of 2020 before we broke it again. It took 92 days. 90 almost almost 100 days before we really started to break out and so if we were to zoom in here this is what this would look like right here so we would bobble around within this disbelief area and we could come back down to back test the neckline several times before we really break out of here so that would be I mean bitcoin selling off you know to the downside of 30 to 33k and then working its way out of there um, post bitcoin's having so for six to 12 months so from this high if we were to measure 90 days where would that take us well uh, before we start breaking out again that would be april of 2024 so right before bitcoin's having around or after bitcoin's having we don't know exactly when the markets are going to start you know breaking out but arguably bitcoin's having or after right six to 12 months is the most likely case scenario so if you guys are looking to accumulate crypto and the the last stop before we really start taking off and seeing massive amounts of liquidity flow into the market well it would be this year this is really the final year and then towards the tail end of 2025 when we start to see this blow off top for the crypto market and then going into 2020 26 then crypto might not be as interesting anymore because the gains going into 2030 might not be as crazy as people expect because we're going to see the majority of the gains this bull run cycle just like the law of diminishing returns for each past cycle has kicked in well then this cycle is going to be less returns than the previous cycle but you can still catch some major gains if you know which projects to be in at the right time when they launch so if you guys do want to see our top altcoin picks that we believe are going to perform very very well and even potentially potentially outperform projects like xrp or xlm that have smaller market caps and you want to discover those first then all you need to do right now is go to bullrunners.com click the button on the page put in your best email address you're going to get instant access to our daily newsletter to receive the best information to help you prepare for the worst that's yet to come in this economy you're going to get free access to our telegram group and you're going to be notified first when we launch our financial education platform because together you know what we're doing we're backing up our truck all the way to the bank we're grabbing the bags packing them and stacking them leaving no bags left behind because we believe the spending power of the dollar is going to continue to go down in value that's a fact based on inflation what the federal reserve is doing with their monetary print orders and blockchain technology distributed ledger technology and cryptocurrencies are going up in interest over time that's the truth and together you know where we're going we're going camping on the beaches of the moon i'll see you guys on the next video i'll see you on bullrunners.com as always Stay bullish.